What are you? Okay. A lot of pressure on all the phrase interesting function. Interesting function. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Nice. Alright, now again the function was drawn faded into back into light red. And the values the computer stores doesn't seem to be the values at the grid points anymore, right? These are the level of these lines are what computer stores if you use a finite border method. What are these? Averages. Seems to be averages, right? That's actually exactly right. Okay? The averages are... Uh, so do, does anybody know what is the mathematical expression of an average of a function? What does it mean? Yeah. The integral divided by the integral. Yes, it's the integral of this function divided by the width. Okay, so that gives us the what the finite volume stores, and it is useful if you solve an equation that is in the conservative form. So, for example, if the partial differential equation describes the conservation of energy. Storing the average the energy within each volume is very useful. Why? Because if you multiply the average by the size of the volume, what you get is the total energy inside the volume. Right? So basically then we can use what we learned in Unified of like basically figuring out, okay, if I have the total energy, what is the outflux of energy, what is the influx of energy, what is the work done, and things like that to figure out the evolution of each average value inside each domain. This is what finite volume does. Very different from finite difference, okay? The most non-obvious one is probably finite element. And finite element right now is basically the de facto way of solving any structures problems. I'd like somebody to actually draw another function and see how finite element discretize it in a way that is different from either finite difference or finite volume. All right, thank you. Hit my head yesterday. I can come up with some pretty interesting shapes, I suppose. <laughs> All right, cool, nice. So, so here we have seen the uh, faint red line. Almost to see the faint red line. And that's the line being drawn. And the solid red line is how finite element is representing or approximating that function. What is it? Linear interpolation. Linear interpolation, that's actually a pretty accurate description of what happens over here, except for, look at here. Not actually different from finite difference, right? In finite difference, I'm storing the value at the grid points, which is here. In finite element, somehow I got into here. Is it taking the average low? Okay, first, uh, what is special on these uh, solid, uh, the thick red lines? They're all straight lines within each interval, right? In finite element, each of these interval is called an, what? Element. Element, yes, <laughs> right. Okay, so, so all this function within each element, it's a, it's a linear function, right? And, uh, Unlike finite volume, do I still have finite? Oh, I don't have. Unlike finite volume, which looks like this continuous, this is actually continuous across the elements, right? But in what sense are we approximating this original function? 
well, I don't expect you to actually figure it out here. It's actually kind of the secret source of finite element. It's figuring out the best possible approximation of this uh, fan red line using piecewise linear and continuous functions. All right. So basically, it is looking for all possible functions that are piecewise linear, I mean linear in, within each element, and continuous across the elements. And within that infinitely many possible functions, pick one that is as close in some metric to this faint red line as possible. All right, that's kind of a, this, yes? So, uh, when you say as close, like, do you mean the function as a whole or within each element? The function as a whole, yeah, that's a very good question. So, so this, uh, uh, so the uh, all the finite element method is uh, is basically figuring out some kind of uh, overall statement, right? So, so this is saying that I want this red line within that class of functions, which is uh, piecewise linear and uh, uh, continuous, to be the best overall approximation. And uh, uh, other statements, for example, I want a function that is piecewise linear and uh, continuous that is the best overall solution to a partial differential equation. Right? So, so how do you define this best overall? That is, gives you both a reasonably accurate solution and is mathematically and computationally tractable is really what finite element is about. All right. So, so this is basically kind of a, a very quick introduction of uh, uh, all we are going to learn about uh, PDE solvers. So, so basically the, the conclusion is that uh, we are not going to be able to figure out how to solve any PDE in this uh, lecture or in all of your study, I would say, right? Unless uh, somebody comes up with the uh, extremely clever thing in a few years and uh, we introduced a prototype PD that is the advection diffusion equation it's very powerful because there are several special cases of that equation that gives you a simple uh, hyperbolic equation that has waves a simple parabolic equation that has like diffusion of heat and also a simple elliptic equation that is a steady state in space okay and uh, these different types of uh, equations are suitable uh, to be solved with different solvers and the solvers we are going to learn include the uh, finite difference methods finite volume methods and finite element methods each discretizes the equation in a completely different way okay we are going to study what these methods are and uh, what what equations they are suitable for solving and how do you program that to, to solve it. And also, when you get a PD solver for solving some equations, uh, they usually tells you what method they are using. And now you know how they work. All right, cool. I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs>